All right, these are our two 180 watt solar panels by Evergreen Solar. There are two panels totaling 360 watts. We bought them through affordablesolar.com. I highly recommend. They're about $800 a piece and uh, $1,700 for two uh, with shipping up to North Dakota. But they sit up here all day long and they mix power through the sun about 7 amps each uh, on a good day. So about 15 to 16 amps total. Both of these panels are hooked up to a 8 gauge cable that runs downstairs off the roof and they uh, go into the junction boxes and they have that 3 quarter inch liquid conduit that runs down off the roof down the gutter and you can see it there it jumps over there and uh, goes down that's our 3 quarter inch liquid tight conduit coming down from the roof down into our LB, I think this is 2 inch LB, and coming from underground is the two 6 gauge cables from either windmill. And the data and communications cabling for the webcams. These are the two first solar panels we made. Uh, we actually heard about you can make solar panels for a lot cheaper than what you can purchase them for on the internet. And of course that is true, but they are pretty hard to make. And as far as the quality, getting them to last, it's a lot better just to buy them at this point so uh, these are the two we experimented with they're about 80 watts total and what they do we have them on, mounted on the shed they run a little night light of about I don't know, a whole bunch of those uh, super bright LEDs that I bought off eBay and inside we got a little 12 volt charge controller a little 10 amp and of course that just sits there and charges up a, a semi battery and uh, that works cool as a cucumber. I checked a little while ago and it's 14.4 volts, charges up during the day, drains during the night. Alright, this is our second AirX wind generator. This is also a 12 volt, 400 watt generator from AffordableSolar.com. It uh, outputs about 400 watts or 28 amps in ideal conditions. Uh, we usually don't get that unless you have some sort of uh, wind storm or lightning storm. Uh, I got this one mounted on my roof. It also has a webcam. We call it the wind cam. You can see this through the website actually. Uh, we don't really have it up all the way yet. It's on a telescoping type of tube that goes all the way down to the ground into a cement base. And this also has a 6 gauge Carroll cable going up to it. It's not quite windy enough to get it to spin. We need about 7 to 10 miles an hour. All right, this is our charge controller. It is a TriStar TS60 by the Morningstar Corporation. It uh, it's a pretty good one. It's pretty much the best we could buy through those guys for the money we had. What happens is the solar energy at 12 volts comes downstairs and it enters the controller. And this controller does a multitude of things. It tracks how much power you actually made in a day, and it makes sure that the batteries do not get overcharged. So once the batteries hit 14.4 volts, this controller will curb the amperage going to the batteries and the voltage down to nothing until the battery voltage falls below 14.4 volts. <clears throat> and this will allow us to track how much energy is actually made. Uh, it expresses it in amp hours and kilowatt hours and it also, and as you can tell there, it has an RS-232 <clears throat> uh, communications port, so you can actually hook it up to your computer and put in custom set points as to when you want it to regulate and float charge and the pulse width modulization part of the controller. Of course, this controller is way overbuilt for what we're doing with it. Um, but of course, most of the equipment in the basement we spent good money on to actually make it upgradable for the future when we get more wind and or more solar. This uh, controller is actually good for handling up to 4 kilowatts of solar power. And right now we have 3 tenths of a kilowatt actually running through the controller, so we are just teasing it. Alright, as you all know, most appliances in your home do not run on 12 volt energy. 
you need to control convert 12 volt power from your batteries up to a 120 volt 60 hertz power that most appliances and lights and everything else in your house can use for this we bought a Xantrex DR series inverter charger this is the uh, DR2412 series we bought this for about 900 bucks online um, I don't remember where we bought it but uh, you can search for this and you'll be able to find it it's got an automatic transfer switch 60 amp built right in it's got many types of battery settings. You can have all types of batteries, deep cycle, lead calcium, uh, maintenance free AGM, gel cell, NICAD. Um, it's got a multitude of battery settings. Uh, you can set how many amp hours your battery capacity is for your whole battery bank. You can char uh, do battery charge rate. If you do need to use this as a charger, it's built in up to a 120 amp battery charger, which is very nice. Uh, it's got something called search mode. Search mode is very nice for a small system like ours because if nothing is on in the house, no lights, no load present to the inverter, it will actually enter a search mode, which happens it sends out small pulses of power and it will look for something to do and if it finds nothing, it'll sit in that search mode forever, taking up one, was it uh, one tenth of an amp, 100 milliamps. What if it's running? Uh, without any load on it, it takes up to an amp or better. So this saves you a lot of energy uh, during the day when nothing's on, nobody's home. And as you can see, we are taking virtually no power. I think I have one light on, which is about 300 milliamps, which doesn't even register on my ammeter. Let me hit on again. This is an off-grid system, not an on-grid. Uh, our off-grid system takes pure 12-volt battery power and turns it into 120 and we do not sell energy back to our utility company. If we were an on-grid system, this inverter would cost roughly two to three times as much and we would need about 300 volts DC coming down from the roof to effectively make an on-grid system work for us. So for the cost for starting out, we decided to go with a strictly off-grid system. All right, a lot of people don't think that you need, you know, massive circuit breakers, but we chose a DC breaker box by Midnight Solar Incorporated. This is a 250 amp box. Uh, battery power comes in to our main 250 amp breaker. That also goes straight up to the inverter and also comes down to five DIN mount rail breakers. Of course, these breakers are for strictly for safety purposes and overcurrent. We have five breakers. One of them is our solar controller. One of them is our solar array or our PV array. And we have a wind generator one, wind generator two. And I also have some 12 volt fluorescent lamps that are running downstairs. And you can see the various amperages, anywhere from 20 to 63 amps. And of course our main is 250 amps. And there is nothing smaller than 6 gauge wire in this box. Uh, going up to the inverter we have 2 watt. And uh, most of the connections on the batteries are 4 watt. 